social media's soft language censorship needs to unalive itself. Originally published June 7, 2024 by Paul O'Flaherty on pauloflaherty.com. I'm just going to throw it out there that I utterly despise algospeak, a term I first heard about in a 2022 Washington Post article, even though the practice of using euphemisms, emojis, or other made-up words to avoid offending the censorship overlords of TikTok, YouTube, and other social media platforms has been around for what feels like an eternity. It's not that made-up internet languages are a new thing. Remember Leetspeak? Or how about TechSpeak, that weird texting language where nobody can spell words or use punctuation, so it takes you longer to parse the actual meaning so you don't make the mistake of helping your Uncle Jack off a horse instead of helping your Uncle Jack off a horse. But at least those languages, and I use the term very loosely, had a purpose. Kind of. Leetspeak. L33TSSP34K, or Leetspeak, L-E-E-T-S-P-E-A-K, for the uncool hacksaws, made us feel cool on the message boards as we script kiddies, wannabe hackers who used tools made by others instead of doing the work, boasted about our exploits, or wrote messages in the text that scrolled across the bottom of demos, think technical demonstrations of programming awesomeness, featuring amazing graphics and music on the C64 and Amiga demo scenes. Yes, I am that old. TechSpeak, or SMS language, wasn't so much about being cool as it was about efficiency. Limited to 160 characters, typing on keyboards where you had to repeatedly press the same button to get the letter you wanted, and being charged for every single text sent and sometimes received, forced an efficiency that has long outlived its practicality. Think of a chicken pecking at nine buttons for her next meal while standing on one leg with each message resulting in a grain of feed being taken away. But algo speak? This has nothing to do with being cool or technical limitations, or as some may claim, protecting the feelings of others. No, it's all about the Benjamins, the loop, the dough, the cabbage, the clams, cheddar, potato chips, bacon... Damn, I'm hungry now. You see, the only feelings that are being protected here are the ones of advertisers. Because if their ads appear next to a word that they don't like, such as sex, then they won't want to spend their money on the platform. Because, you know, how dare people think about sex? And how dare the platforms not make money at all costs? But segs, I mean, but segs, S-E-G-G-S, is completely acceptable because it sounds like you're slurring your words after knocking back half a bottle of vodka and reads like you have a really weird egg fetish. How do we get back to chickens again? And nobody knows what it means, right? Nobody at all, right? A rose by any other name and all that. If you're going to get offended or triggered by a word or term, it doesn't matter what made-up idiotic term is being used instead of it when it's used ubiquitously. You're going to be triggered or offended regardless. We're not even moving the goalposts here. All we're doing is painting stripes of red, green, and blue on the ball and hoping that it's enough to confuse the colorblind people. Of course, the real reason I'm so adverse to all of this is that this verbal smegma has made the jump from online to offline, to the real world, like a linguistic herpes. As a result, I feel like my intelligence is being infected and diminished by people whose entire conversations sound like every word in their vocabulary is made from only four vowels and three consonants with some good old vocal fry thrown in for a dash of spice. It's depressing, it's demoralizing, and it just results in me wanting to unalive myself even more. To quote the late George Carlin, Sigmund Freud said sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Oh yeah? Well, sometimes it's a big brown dick. It's 2024, and he couldn't have been more correct.